Hi friends, Pastor Courtney here. I hope you're having a wonderful day, but even if you're not, I want to encourage you today to choose joy. One of the verses that I love to speak out almost more than any other is Nehemiah 8.10, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And I don't know about you, but I have been speaking that one out a lot lately as I've been home with my children for the last two weeks. Let's just say uh, there have been some highs, like them climbing up on our countertop and risking their lives to get a cup, or some lows, like me having to scrub toothpaste out of our carpet this morning. <laughs> but in the midst of everything, I have to say that I think they are actually teaching me even more than I am teaching them. And I say that with all sincerity. Um, because the lesson they are teaching me is about joy. Now, I know that my kids are not perfect, and I know we can agree, none of our kids are. But I do know that kids, the heart of a child is so close to God's heart, and that they understand the things of God and get them so much more quickly than us hard-hearted or hard-headed adults. Um, and so when my kids speak, especially about the things of God, I really listen to those and take them to heart. This week at one point, Audra told me, um, you know, Mom, uh, God's holding us up right now. And I said, what do you mean? And she looked at me like, are you crazy? She goes, you know, God's holding us in the palm of his hand, right? I said, yeah. Another time when we were reading uh, Bible reading at night, which are some of the sweetest times you can have with your kids. Uh, she goes, mom, I just love God's word because it is like st those stories are straight from God's heart for us. Uh, I just love that. Just pierce my heart. And, and my little son, Wyatt, all the time lately, he's been asking me to pray for everything. Pray for my finger, mom. Pray for the sun to shine. Pray for Papa. He just knows that God answers prayer. And um, I've been seeing a glimpse of God's heart lately, for sure, through the way that they find joy in everything. Find joy in a game of tag. Find joy in a comfy pillow or a new little robin outside. They find joy in a good story or in a warm hug. They find joy in everything. And I know that our God, we can see from his word, is fiercely joyful. And there's so many references to having a heart like a child in his word because that is a heart of joy. And um, I know that he takes joy very seriously. You know, God, he's, he's acquainted, it says in his word, with sorrow and with grief as a response to our fallen world. But I know at the core and heart of who he is that we can see he is a God of joy. And he created our world with so much joy yeah, and creates us to ha have and be able to um, choose joy. Uh, we can see from his word in John chapter 15 that right after Jesus teaches the disciples about obedience, he says, I've taught you these things so you can have joy and so that your joy may be complete. <laughs> Joy is serious to God and uh, not just any kind of joy, but fullness of joy. I love quotes and I have a few that I have collected about joy. I love how um, Lewis Smead says, to miss out on joy is to miss out on the reason for your existence. C.S. Lewis, one of my favorites, said that joy is the serious business of heaven. And I'm reminded of back in December, you might remember uh, at our Jingle Jam, we talked about how um, joy is choosing to be happy even when things don't go your way. And Paul wrote in Philippians 4.4, 4, kids, I know you know this one, rejoice in the Lord always. And I will say it again, rejoice, 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 rejoice. <laughs> That's how we did it in that verse. Now, the Bible puts joy in a non-optional category. Joy is a command, guys. And often we equate joy with a feeling, but really it's a discipline. It's a choice. We have to wake up in the morning and despite everything that's coming at us, we choose joy in that moment. And that might not always be our first response, but that can be a discipline that we create in our heart and our mind that we ask for God's help to instill that in us. Psalms 4, 7 says, you have filled my heart with greater joy. When anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought me joy. Psalms 94, 19. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, when you, fail when you face trials of many kinds. James 1, 2. That's a tough one. <laughs> you know, our world is experiencing a lot of trials right now. And probably the first thing that comes to mind is not joy. Is not joy in response to those things. But we can choose it. It says in that verse, consider it pure joy. That doesn't mean feel happy all the time. All right. That means to, under the circumstances, consider or call things joyful. Label them as worth rejoicing over. You know, we don't have a lot of control right now over our circumstances. Okay. We're home and we're here to stay for a while. Okay. 
We can't control that. But we can control how we think about our circumstances. And when bad things happen, we can immediately say, oh, this is terrible. This is a bad day. My life is going wrong. How did this happen? I'm out of toilet paper. Or we can say to ourselves, this is a bad thing, but I'll get through it. I'll learn. I'll be stronger. I will call the growth and strength worth rejoicing over, even when it hurts. I will choose joy. One of my favorite books is called The Life I've Always Wanted. It's by John Ortberg, and it's about spiritual disciplines. And I love what he says uh, about the discipline of celebration and joy. He says, true joy, as it turns out, comes only to those who have devoted their lives to something greater than personal happiness. This is most visible in extraordinary lives and saints and martyrs, you know, the greats. But it is no less true for ordinary people like us. One test of authentic joy is its compatibility with pain. Joy in this world is always joy in spite of something. Joy is, as Karl Barth put it, a defiant nevertheless, <clears throat> set at full stop against bitterness and resentment. If we don't rejoice today, we'll not rejoice at all. If we wait until conditions are perfect, we will still be waiting when we die. If we're going to rejoice, it must be in this day, because this is the day that the Lord has made. And today we can ask God to help us choose joy. So let's do that right now. God, I thank you for this day, for this moment that you created. I thank you for my New Hope friends and family, God. I pray, Jesus, that you would lift them up today, God, that your joy would just fill them, that your Holy Spirit would speak to their hearts today in a new and a fresh way. I pray, God, that these truths from your word about joy would sink deep in our hearts, God, that we consider we can consider things joy. Even when we don't feel happy, joy is a choice, God. Even when things don't go our way, even when we're facing trials of many kinds, God, we can choose your joy and consider things joy, label them joyful, God, because we know that you work all things together for the good of those who love you. We love you so much, Lord. We thank you. We honor you today for you are worthy, God. In your name we pray. Amen. I love you guys so much, and I hope you have a day full of joy. See you soon.